<clears throat> Welcome. Welcome to the show. This episode is a little bit special than all, than I would say the other ones. Mainly because the topic was suggested by a, a viewer, a listener, someone from the audience, someone like you. I couldn't take any topic. Just DM me on my Instagram page. That's related to my podcast, which is HopDiv2. That is P-O-T-D-I-V number two. That's where I post all my episodes and content uh, for this for the show. Anyway, the viewer wanted to know about the ocean, but he wanted to know from my point of view. So, join me as we go into the vast and mysterious exploring the ocean through philosophy. Let's begin. The ocean, with its vast mysterious depths, has long been an object of contemplation and awe for philosophers. From the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle, musing on the nature of the sea, to the modern concept of the sublime and the deep ecology, ecology movement, the ocean has been a source of inspiration from some, for some of the most profound ideas about our place in the world and our relationship with the natural world. As we dive deeper into the ocean's depths, we are reminded of the vastness and complexity of the universe and the humanity and wonder, oh, humility and wonder it inspires within us. Join us as we explore the philosophical perspectives on the ocean and how it shapes our understanding of ourselves and the world around us. Let's start off by diving into some of the incredible facts the uh, the ocean holds. Because of course, this is fill up on facts. And we have to add a couple of facts in this episode. The ocean is a vast and mysterious place. Home to millions of undiscovered species and playing a vital role in regulating the Earth's climate and weather. The ocean absorbs about 25% of the carbon dioxide produced by human activities. It's a major source of oxygen produced by photoplankton and algae, and a major source of food, with fish and seafood being a primary, primary source of protein for billions of people around the world. The ocean is also a major source of natural resources and the deepest point in the ocean is the Challenger's Deep in the in the Murrayan in the Mir, Marayan, Maray, Mariana, the Mariana Trench. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. That was my mind was not clicking. Which is about thirty six thousand and seventy feet or ten thousand nine hundred and ninety four meters deep. The ocean also plays an important role in the circulation of water, nutrients, and heat around the planet, often referred as the engine of the earth. And it's a home to some of the most extreme environments on the earth, including hydrothermal vents and cold steeps or seeps, sorry, which supports unique commu- communities of animals that can survive without sunlight. Some scientists even believe that the ocean has a memory due to the fact that the ocean water can store information for centuries, allowing it to transfer information between different parts of the ocean. It's fascinating. The ocean is just so big. It's kind of scary how vast it is. While we've explored some of the incredible facts about the ocean, it's also important to consider how the ocean is viewed through the lens of philosophy, which is what we're going to be diving into right now. As I've researched and looked into these topics, not only the ocean, but all the other ones I've been talking about, Aristotle definitely keeps appearing. This Greek philosopher believed that the ocean was the source of all life and that it had a purifying and 
regener regenerative effect on the land. Imagine the ocean as a mystical, life-giving force, pulsing with energy and possibility. It's a perspective that hold, has stood the test of time and continues to captivate and inspire us even today. He also thought that the ocean was a symbol of the infinite and the unknowable, knowable, and, at the, and that it, it, it represented the vast, unknown depths of the human psyche. He considered that the ocean was both an active and passive principle and that it was the source of all change and movement. Fascinating. Here's another concept. The concept of the sublime in 18th century philosophy is a term used to describe the awe-inspiring power and grandeur of nature, particularly the ocean. It is associated with the idea of the vastness, majesty, and wildness of nature, which inspires feelings of wonder and awe in the observer. The 18th century philosopher Edmund Burke is considered to be one of the main figures in the development of the concept of the sublime. He defined the sublime as an experience of the mind. That is a combination of pleasure and pain, where the imagination is thrilled by the idea of something vast and overwhelming, but at the same time, there is a sense of fear and danger. <laughs> Carl Jung, Jung, I hope I said that right. Uh, it's Carl C A R C A R L, and then Jung, or yeah. J-U-N-G, I think that's how you say that. A, Sw a Swiss psychiatric and psychoanalyst proposed the idea of the ocean as a symbol of the unconscious mind. He believed that the ocean represented the vast unknown depths of the human psyche and that it was a powerful symbol of the unconscious, representing the deepest and most hidden parts of the human mind. Jung believed that the ocean symbolized the collective unconscious, which is the part of the unconscious that is shared by all humans and is made up of archetypes and symbols. He believed that the ocean was a powerful archetype rep representing the unconscious mind and, that, and the deepest and most primitive aspects of the human nature. He also believed that the ocean represented the emotions and feelings that are often represented or repressed or hidden from consciousness. My apologies. And that it was a symbol of the unconscious impulses and desires that drive human behavior. Young also believed that the ocean was a symbol of the self, representing the innermost essence of the individual and the deepest abs ab aspects of the psyche. He believed that the ocean was a symbol of the self, rep representing the individual's deepest desires, fears, and aspirations. He also believed that the ocean represented the soul and that it was a symbol of the spiritual aspect of human nature. That one right there, that just, that, I mean, yes, it's not really from a philosophical viewpoint, but to consider it as one is highly incredible. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna list a couple more. We have, I'm not really going much, much in depth, but here's a summary of these environmental ethics. I know I've already done an episode of ethics, but this one relates to this topic. This perspective focuses on the moral and ethical dimensions of the human-ocean relationships. It argues that we have a moral responsibility to protect and preserve the ocean and its ecosystems, 
and that our actions have a direct impact on the health and well-being of the ocean. That is fascinating. Deep ecology. Eco, eco, well, ecology. I think that's right. Deep ecology. This perspective emphasizes the intrinsic, intrinsic value of the nat natural world and the interconnectedness of all living things. It argues that the ocean and its ecosystems should be protected for their own sake rather than for the benefit they provide to humans. Wild. The ocean is a vast, mysterious place, and it has been viewed in many different ways by philosophers throughout history. Aristotle saw it as one, as the source of all life and a purifying and regenerative force. The 18th century's concept of the sunlight saw the ocean as a source of awe and wonder. Carl Jung believed it was a symbol of the unconscious mind and a representation of the deepest and most primitive aspects of the human nature. Whatever the perspective we take on the ocean, it is undeniably that a powerful and mysterious force that shapes our understanding of ourselves and the world around us. So it's important to consider how the ocean is viewed through the lens of philosophy as we explore and appreciate it, appreciate its incredible facts and features. Or features. Did I say that right? I hope I did. So it's important to consider how the ocean is viewed through the lens of philosophy as we explore and appreciate its incredible facts and features. It is a little short episode. I, I, I know that. There's not a lot of philosophy, but in all honesty, it was a little difficult for me to find worthy, worthy little segments I wanted to put into my podcast. This was a fun and a very interesting topic, though. Did learn a lot. A lot of different readings and stuff for this to be written. But. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I don't know, who knows, if there's anyone else out there who wants to, want something uh, philo philosophicalized, I don't even know if that's a word, philosophicalized, I guess I just made it up, but anyway, any topic, turn to philosophy, that's what I'm trying to do, and uh, who knows, maybe there's something you want to know that's in a different viewpoint, different perspective in a different way of thinking about it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.